Welcome to the introduction to the Delacour Cube Message Handler project template. Once you have installed the DQMH toolkit, you can click on Create Project. This will show all the project templates, including the Delacour QMH. The QMH has uh, documentation that ships with it that, that you can get to by clicking on the More Information. This also is included on the project and it's also accessible via the Help menu. The use cases for the DQMH uh, is useful when you have multiple tasks that occur in parallel, often different at, at different rates. It's also useful when multiple instances of the same front panel are needed. In that case, you would use a clonable module. And also, if you want to use just a simple uh, module that has a single front panel, but you want a way to be able to eavesdrop on the function of the VI, then you can also use the DQMH. We're assuming that you're already familiar with the QMessage uh, handler that, in, that ships with LabVIEW. And on that, and the documentation for that, uh, we, th there's already explanations of the event handling loop, enqueuing messages to the message handling loop, and the message handling loop handling them. The things that we're adding with the DQMH is that we can receive not only messages sent from the front panel, but we can also be receiving uh, messages from either another module or code external to this current module via an event. In that case, the message was received from the outside and it's enqueued to the message handler for it to consume. It consumes it in, by dequeuing it and then executes the message diagram based on the message dequeued. We have also optionally the option of broadcasting to other VIs that the message executed. In addition to, in, in, the other uh, additions to the QMessage uh, handler is that we have to register to listen to these request events. And we also manage if the module is a single instance or a clone, and we leave it in a way that can be run by itself. So that will be point uh, number seven. So this is uh, the, some of the difference with the regular QMage. Some of the things to keep in mind are uh, request is code that fires an event requesting the DQMH module main to do something. And a broadcast is uh, code that fires an event broadcasting that the DQMH module did something. Well, let's uh, stop a little bit of the theory here and go and create a project. Which is a name and uh, additionally with a location for the project. Also, we have uh, the option to include or not include the do something events. Uh, if you wish to add a new DQMH module to an existing project, then cancel this out and just go to Tools Delacour DQMH and add a new module. We'll create uh, the regular project template. So we are creating the project. I have the setting on my project to show item paths. So you can see what uh, elements are copied directly to the folder that we created and which ones are not. In this case, everything that's on your project is copied directly to the folder. If we go to the files, you'll see that we have also a clonable module admin class, uh, a message queue class, and an admin uh, module class that are directly installed on the BI library when you install the DQMH. We did this because um, let's look at the My Singleton the module and look at their main. One of the things that the uh, NIQMH that ships with LabVIEW has is a library that gets copied for every project. One of the issues we were having with this was that uh, uh, people would make changes to those libraries and then expect them to be on future projects, not realizing that they were copies of their own uh, code. So instead, we are wrapping the queue in a class. And don't worry if you're not comfortable with uh, OOP. This is it's very minimal what we do with OOP. And if you want uh, to change how this code works, you can inherit from it and create your own version of the queue. But for the most part, uh, you don't have to worry about it. It just works like the traditional QMH uh, code. We had mentioned that um, we the, the traditional QMH would, when you click on the do something button, it handles the event and then it sends and queues a message to the message handler loop where you have the something case. Now, in our case here, we also can receive the message from the outside world. So in this case, we have the my singleton module request event was fired by somebody outside of my code. 
And in that case, the same message that uh, something is in queue. So now I have two ways of getting to this uh, code. Either the end user clicks on the button or another developer sends the request to do something and the same case in the message handling loop is executed. Now, how does this uh, registration for events happen? When the module initializes, it will ask this, uh, will send this message to create the events. It will create the broadcast event and the request events. Now, you don't have to worry about this code because it is created, and you can see on the note here, the contents of this BI are automatically generated and modified by the tools, Delacore, DQMH, many options. So when we add a new module, this BI is created. When we create a new event or when we remove events, the uh, tools automatically edit these uh, cluster for us. But what we have here is one um, request, one event for each one of our requests. Uh, and in, well, in this case, no, I'm sorry, for the broadcast. So we have module did init, a status updated, error reported, the module did something, the module did stop, and update on execution status. By the same token, we have the requests. And again, we're sending the message to create it. Uh, we're sending the input to create it uh, new. So this is only done when the module initializes. And in this case, we are creating the request events. And again, you don't have to worry about creating this. This is done for you programmatically when you go to Delacore DQMH, create new DQMH event. And again, as a reminder from what we discussed on the documentation, a request is an event that's fired from the outside of the module requesting the module to do something. So in this case, stopping, do something, do something else, show the panel, hide the panel, uh, do something else and wait for reply, get mod module execution status and show block diagram. Anywhere else where these BIs are called, they will not have the create new set to true and they will just be uh, retrieving the references for the events that get created inside these two BIs. So that was the uh, request events. So we're registering for the request events. These in turn, and let me just show you that, uh, in this case it's called my single to module request events. If I were to change that, this, so let me just put here the word uh, demo, right? And if I were to save this BI, and then I do the same thing for the calling BI, you're going to see that this change to demo, demo my singleton module request events do something. So it is this wire here, this magic wire here, doing the registration of the events that allows us to, when we edit an event handle by this case, have the option of all the request events for this my singleton module. Okay. So that's, uh, that's how we, and, and, and again, this module can be run by itself as a standalone. And when I press do something, do something else, it just works as a traditional DQMH. Now I could also call it from the external world. So in our case, we're gonna use a tester here that tests my singleton module. And the tester is just showing that the calling code can be any uh, design pattern. In this case, it's just a while loop when event structure that uh, starts the module. And then anytime the buttons on the front panel get pressed, so if I do find terminal here, I start the module. If I do the show module panel, for example, then uh, I fire the request. So let me show you the show panel. I'm going to press Control Shift E to show you the location of this VI on the project. So we are on the public API and it's the show panel. Again, you didn't have to create any of this code. This code was created for you automatically when you created the project uh, from, the, from the project template. You see, again, we have the same call for the request, but we have the create new set to false. We're not creating them new. So we're grabbing the reference to the show panel. And then if it is a valid uh, refnum, we go ahead and fire it. Then in turn, what would happen at the main module for the singleton is that it would receive in this uh, registration that the show panel was uh, executed. So if we look at the show panel user event, it will tell us to go to the show panel case and the show panel and the message handling, we just show the message that the panel was shown and then open the front panel. 
let's look at it in action. So if I go to the test my singleton and I run and I click start module and I click show module, there it is, my singleton module panel of my singleton module is shown. Okay? So that's the, the, the message. There are, uh, so that's, that will be for the request. Then if we want to actually see what some of the broadcasts would be, we have, for example, here, did something or error reported. So how is error handling uh, managed? If the module is running by itself and an error occurred, then this is going to enqueue to the error case. In the error case, we'll check if the module was launched externally. If it was launched externally, then we will be calling the error reported BI that we have here. And again, let me show you where this guy is located on the project. There it is in the broadcast. We'll call the error report and then the calling code is responsible for the error handling. And of course, this is your BI, so you can change it uh, if you don't agree with this uh, default handling. If, the, if it was not externally launched, that means you're running as a standalone. And then in that case, we use the simple error handling and enqueue the exit message. So we stop execution. So if you are running, and let me simulate an error here, it will give you the dial box and it will stop. Where if you are calling from external code, like from the tester, and we start the module, and I simulate the same error, the BI doesn't stop, it's still running, but it gave me the information about the same error happening here. Okay, so that would be the error handling. So now let's look at how that uh, event was generated and managed. So if I go back to the main and I go back to the uh, error report, we'll see that this error report is calling again the broadcast events without setting it to new. So it's retrieving the events that we had already created and then it fires the event. What happens then is any modules that are registered to listen to this event, like in the case of the tester, will have, we have broadcast, uh, the name of this VI is uh, obtain broadcast events for registration. So I obtain the broadcast for registration. If, again, we set it to not create new. If the module is already running, then this will have a valid reference. If it has not, if it's not running already, when we start the module, the, the events get uh, registered again from the ones generated from the module. And then I can listen to that error uh, reported event. So the error reported, I got registered for it either because the module was already running or because the start module was launched. I get the error information here and then we can uh, display it on the front panel. So these are the two, uh, the two event uh, trips, right? We have the requests that are uh, wrapped in BIs that can be fired from outside our module. And then we have broadcasts events that are wrapped in BIs that can be fired within our module. The uh, other advantage of having this event uh, is that we can have multiple modules registering for the same event. So I have my application main in this case that in the wait for event case is registered to listen to the same event. So we have the uh, error reported, uh, that's for the clonable, for the singleton. So you can see that I have, I can be listening to multiple messages in multiple places. So if I run the application and I start my singleton module, I can then go to my project and uh, start the tester and use the tester in this point as as a sniffer. So this way, if I have, let me move this guy out of the way and I'm going to move my tester over here and we're going to go back to our application. If I start sending messages, you can see that my tester is working as a singleton because I can have multiple uh, modules registered to listen to the broadcast messages from my uh, DQMH module. I can also interject things from the tester. So if I wanted to test, like for example, the uh, test do something else and wait for a reply is not something that I can execute via the main application, but I can add it here and, uh, and test it. So the module got the 10, right? And the status on the main application was there too. So 
Uh, there are there's more detail on other applications uh, and, and other videos that we have created. There's the getting started with the DQMH that goes into more detail on how to create the events and how to add new modules. The last thing I'm going to highlight is you don't need to go to the create project. If you have an existing project and you want to add a module there, you can go to the DQMH and add the module from there. Let us know if you have any questions. Thanks.